Hi, um, I'm Marlin. I'm working for Urban Company as an area sales manager. Um, I'm responsible for the UK and Ireland as well. So we are right now here at Hardbury's Farm and having a look at our machine. Hi, I'm Marcus from O'Donovan Engineering. I'm here today as well uh, at Hartbury College and um, we're just going to talk through the urban machine and find out a bit more information about it. Yeah, so Hartbury College is um, using two urban feeders with two stations each, uh, all equipped with the UVC technology for disinfecting. Um, here there's some, some new um, trials they do. Um, they put the calves on after just one day. They got colostrum on the first day. On the second day, they're coming right to the machine. And then they are keeping them in small groups from like uh, 10 to 15 calves. Um, they got some experience with smaller groups. They had better weight gains. So they dropped down from 12 groups to now 10 groups of 10. Mm. So um, they have better weight gains of like 100 grams a day more with just reducing two calves in each group. Is that due to competition then on the tea tins? Is that the yes, reason? Yes, it is. Here? Because if you have such young calves, you always have some, some competition. They have to learn to use the machine right, yeah. to go on the tea to find the machine and they need some time in the station. So when you start with smaller groups and then after a few weeks or 10 to 15 days, you can go into, into bigger groups. To... And what sort of capacity numbers would you be looking then on, the, on one station? So we recommend 20 to 25 calves each station because it's just also uh, the time of the competition as well. If you have bigger calves, they drink more, so there's more time on the station. and um, the, they only has 24 hours, so they need some time to, to go to the station and not be bullied out. Yeah. So you always have some, some recommendation. It's not the feeder who's the limiting factor, it's always the animal because they are not consistent. They do what they want and we can't uh, force them to, to be in the drink station all the time or that only this calf is allowed in this moment. So we're working with an animal with their own head and so if we have too much animals, you get some problems and weight gain also help because they are not getting the right amount of milk in. Okay. So what makes somebody look to an urban machine? What's the standout points? How is it helping monitor calf health and intakes and feed curves? Um, and it'd be good to know, have a look maybe inside the machine as well it's and talk no about problem. what's we inside. Um, on the machine, we're working with a 12 inch touch screen. Um, it's now no calves are on it, so it's not that interesting. But we are working with the traffic light system for uh, the health monitoring. Yeah. Um, the green calves are all okay. The yellow calves have some problems, maybe getting ill or have some other problems. The red calves we definitely ha should have a look about. And we also have this one touch overview button uh, where you can all ca find all calves that are yellow and red and are allowed to drink right now. So every calf, we call it every calf that's uh, thirsty right now. Okay. Um, and there are a few um, variables going in, like we have a um, flow meter on every station. It's right. called the fit sensor. Yeah. So for every calf, due to the RFID tag, we know how much every calf is drinking. Um, as well as if there are some drink pauses um, through the RFID tag, we also know how often the calf is coming into the box or um, if it's drinking then or not. So, so the drinking rate, the amount? Uh, the amount the calf is drinking, oh, yeah. also the time it needs to drink, yeah. and also um, how active the calf is in the box or in the stable, because if it's walking around and if it's fit and looking for some feed, it's coming in the box more frequently, and we tag every visit. So also if it's not drinking or not allowed to drink in the moment, we have the monitoring that the calf is active in the pen and walking around there. Yeah. We also have a, this is a stainless steel feeder, um, tightly cased in stainless steel, um, with the powder hopper inside where the milk powder is going on. What's uh, the capacity on the standard hopper? The standard hopper has 35 kg capacity, but we have also an extension to get 55 kgs inside yeah. to always have like Which fit over two bags of milk powder inside. And you'd probably recommend that if you're running how many stations off, off the machine? Off? Yeah, we can run up to four stations and then it's recommended, or not recommended, but it's useful to, yeah. to use the extensions more powder. Then. 
to don't run out of powder and don't have to refill it so often. Yeah. Um, we think it's big enough because we are also want the farmer to go to this, this uh, pen once a day to have a look at the calves and not just rely on the yeah. feeder to feed all the time. Mm. It's a tool, isn't it? But it doesn't replace <laughs> doesn't replace the need to go and to see your calves and yeah, do your daily checks and and everything else. It's monitoring and it's helping, yeah. but you always have some some problems. You maybe not the machine not noticing the manual feeding and the cleaning aspects taken care of, isn't it? Yeah. So can have a look at site. Yeah. Um, we have two detergents for cleaning always, then a boiler, and everything is placed off the ground. Uh, so we don't have some problems with uh, some some um, water or something that's dripping or some condensed condensation water and all pumps are assembled so you are they're easy to maintain and if there is a problem you can change them because we are working with the feeder for over 40 years and have some some experience with uh, also talking to our uh, clients the. Uh, dealers, they have to maintain the machine and they also get us, give us feedback how to assemble the pump or get, put the pump in so it's easy to repair or maintain if there's a problem. It's definitely very accessible, isn't it? So this isn't the standard station, this is a bit different, isn't it? It's got the UV Yes, it's, on it. it's the hygiene station. Um, we're disinfecting the teeth with the UVC radiation. Yeah. Um, it's changing the DNA of germs and bacteria and everything, so they can't reproduce. Um, oh, I see. So the light then, so the red light means it's actually the UV is active. Yes, the, the red light is a control light for the UV because yeah. you can't see it with your eyes. And the um, white LEDs are just for, for some light to, to find the teeth ah, if yeah, it's yeah, some yeah. a bit dark on the pen. Yeah, There's good. also a um, sensor on top because the radiation of the UVC can hurt the skin, so if there's an animal coming in, the UVC is turning off. Switched off, yeah. And with every two stations, you need a station electronic. Um, it shows you the number of the calf when it's coming in. Mm. Also, and after that, it's switching to the um, amount the calf is allowed to drink right now, and then it's counting down while the calf is drinking. You So um, if you learn on a new calf, you always see if it's just chewing on the teat or if it's really drinking. So you can see the milk's going in. You know, yeah, 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 because yeah. you have the, the flow sensor inside. Yeah. And if there's a milk flow <clears throat> in, the machine is all counting down the amount of milk. So you're always sure the calf is really drinking if there's some, so if you're learning them on or if they have a problem. When we design our calf sheds, we do it in such a way where there's two stations together and one of these units yeah. is monitoring two stations. It's so if you're stood... the best to see it on from both stations. So yeah. if they are far further away, you need yeah. maybe two of them for each station. Yeah. Uh, also, if there's some some error code or some some cleaning, it's also mm. the code is also on the station. Very good. Uh, so Marlin here at Harbury, they've got the machine up there we were just looking at with the 12 inch screen, yeah. and then they've got a second machine down here, and obviously there's four stations. Why is there no screen? Um, we have the option to, to use just one screen for, for four feeders. Right. It's a master-slave system, not mother. Um, and it's working with the other touch, they're connected. Yeah. So it's for, for bigger installations, it's easier to just use one touch and have it in the central point and then have the feeders um, away from the touch. It's here also for the, um, for the range the hoses would be too long if there just was one feeder. So we get, went here for two feeder design, yeah. but just with one touchscreen because they're not so far away that you... Keep the supply to the, to the stations yeah. as near as possible for temperature, I presume. Temperature, yeah, also yeah. the cleaning is easier when the hoses are shorter. Okay. You don't need such much... Technique. So is there, there's obviously the four stations, is there uh, the capability, because uh, the urban, this is a Fit Plus system uh, with a preheater and that it only has one bowl, doesn't it? So how yeah, it does that, that manages to keep up with feeding the four stations, presumably? With the Fit Plus, um, we install a preheater to keep up the temperature high always in the heater. Yeah. Um, so we have the opportunity to, at four stations and one feeder, um, just open the valves when there are four calves in. And the machine is constantly mixing up new milk in the one bowl yeah. to... Um, 
ensure that all four calves can drink this all, whole amount of milk they are allowed to without any eruption due to the machine. Because otherwise, without the Feed Plus, they drink out the uh, the bowl and then the machine has to mix up again okay. the batch of milk. But with the Feed Plus, it's doing it simultaneously. So they're drinking while it's mixing. So when a, when a calf visits the station and you've set the feed curve, obviously, previously yeah. on the system there, which you can tailor, um, is that calf, if it doesn't drink its whole allocated amount at that visit, what happens to that? Does it lose that allocation and, or does it get moved forward onto the, um, if the, to calf, the next visit? It depends such? on how much the calf has drank of the amount it was allowed. Okay. Like if they are reaching an amount uh, inside that is calculated by the machine, yeah. it's losing the weight, but if it's less, um, then there's the amount is transferred to the next visit. Oh, fine. So if, it, if the calf is drinking way, way less, it's allowed to come back in, after a shorter time period. I see, yeah. If it has yeah. enough for the time period, there's added to the next drinking uh, visit after the, the pausing time, right. the amount that the calf is allowed to drink. Very good. Thanks, Wally. Yeah. Thank you for uh, watching our video about the Alma Pro Calf Feeder. And stay tuned to Donovan's Engineering and hit the follow button and maybe leave a comment if you want.